Thank you very much. Um, it's a great honor to be on this call and to uh, next slide, please. Uh, to present really in a, in a very quick overview um, where the science is um, in asking the question about HIV treatment viral suppression and its role in preventing transmission. Next slide. I want to start by talking about some models, first one that's theoretical, and then some jurisdictional models, meaning models of what viral suppression can do um, in a city or a jurisdiction. Next slide, please. So the first model I want to talk about is really a mathematical one that came out in about 2009. Um, in this mathematical model, the question was, what would the effect be of universal voluntary HIV testing with immediate treatment with antiretroviral therapy on diagnosis? So at, when this model came out, this was a, a very theoretical idea, given the fact that the idea of immediate antiretroviral therapy uh, was not really the state of the art of what was happening in care. But with this vision, the model suggested that with universal HIV testing and immediate antiretroviral therapy, there could be a reduction in HIV to the point of near elimination by the year 2020. Um, in this model, mortality could decrease rapidly. The epidemic could begin to resemble a concentrated epidemic within just certain populations, and um, there was a clear sense that transmission could be reduced. Next slide, please. So uh, when you look at this model, you can compare some mathematical uh, visions. What would happen if you don't treat HIV? That's that red line. Every epidemic eventually comes to a plateau, but we do intervene on HIV. And when you treat um, HIV based on CD4 count, you see that blue line shows a decrease in the incidence of HIV in this model. But with universal voluntary HIV testing and immediate antiretroviral therapy, you see this green line that shows the, uh, the epidemic careening down to near end. Next slide. Now we're going to leave the mathematical universe and then focus more on some jurisdictional data. So um, there's a model from British Columbia that shows what's happened in their history as there have been increasing coverage with antiretroviral therapy. Um, what you can see in their model, and I'll show you a picture in a moment, is that as uh, more individuals are going on antiretroviral therapy, new HIV diagnoses continue to decrease. And additionally, you see fewer and fewer individuals, even with injection drug use history, who, uh, who are getting HIV. So the results really support the benefit of antiretrovirals to reduce transmission. Next slide. So just briefly, the blue line in this, in this graph represents antiretroviral coverage. The red line represents new HIV diagnoses. So you can see pretty clearly on a jurisdictional level as antiretroviral coverage in British Columbia increased and more people became virally suppressed or undetectable, you see new diagnoses decrease. The green line shows that even was occurring among people who use injection drugs. Next slide. Going to the west coast of the United States, we look at San Francisco and they show very similar data. The blue bars demonstrated on the graph you see represent a measure called community viral load. In effect, for this conversation, that represents how many people have um, viremic HIV or how much viremic HIV there is in the community. As these blue bars go down, both those red lines representing new diagnoses and incident HIV infections decrease, demonstrating again the power of viral suppression in a jurisdiction to end HIV. Next slide, please. This is a story in New York City. Though we don't show it in the same way, you can see our, uh, the line representing new HIV diagnoses, that's that black line that continues to go down. You'll see that this actually correlates pretty well with the blue bars going up. Those are individuals living successfully with HIV. As our viral load suppression has increased in our jurisdiction, our new HIV diagnoses and our incidence has declined. Next slide, please. Looking at what we look like in this city, about 74% of our population who are living with HIV are virally suppressed. Over 90% of individuals who are on antiretroviral therapy who are living with HIV are virally suppressed. So we, we are uh, one of the models, in effect, demonstrating the, the, the importance of viral suppression in preventing HIV. Next slide, please. So we're going to leave the universe of mathematical modeling and jurisdictional data and really focus on some of the salient clinical studies that demonstrate the role of viral suppression um, in, in ending the epidemic. Next slide. 
I start with a study that many of you may be familiar with, HPTN052. This is a phase three study, two arms, uh, at, in multiple centers to demonstrate whether or not antiretroviral therapy, when started early, can prevent transmission of HIV in serodiscordant or serodifferent couples. That means one partner with HIV and the other um, who is not living with HIV. The study enrolled almost 1,800 zero different couples at 13 sites in nine countries. The majority were heterosexual. And the randomization was to either start HIV medicines immediately or to wait for CD4 counts to go down, et cetera. The endpoint not necessarily being the health of the person living with HIV, though they looked at it, but the endpoint being how often there were linked transmissions of HIV between partners. Next slide, please. So what they found was, in the entire study, there were eight linked partner infections diagnosed after the person living with HIV was started with antiretroviral therapy. Four of these infections occurred before the partner was virally suppressed, and four occurred in the setting of someone um, whose antiretroviral therapy was failing their treatment. Next slide, please. So uh, part of this slide, uh, the, some, some of the words disappeared, but I'll talk you through it. Um, in, in the HPTN052 results, they found that there was a 93% reduction in HIV transmission between partners. 93% is a number that's really hard to understand. It's not does not mean that there's a 7% transmission every time someone has sex with someone living with HIV, but that a rare event becomes even rarer. Um, more importantly, in the study, and this is the text that disappeared, if there were, if the partner with HIV was virally suppressed, there were zero transmissions in this very large study. So individuals with viral suppression in this study did not transmit HIV. The number was zero. Next slide, please. The partner study took another uh, perspective on this. Um, they actually recruited all over Europe and parts of Canada. They enrolled many zero different couples, about 1,200. And to get into the study, the HIV positive partner had to be on HIV medicines with a, a suppressed viral load to less than 200. They had to, the, the HIV negative partner could not be on antiretroviral therapy for prevention. And they had to acknowledge that they were having condomless sex. They then used molecular fingerprinting to demonstrate whether there were linked transmissions or not. Next slide, please. Again, we have a text problem. Some of the text of the slide disappeared, but the point is pretty clear. You'll see that there's a line with multiple dots that have lined up around the number zero. So individuals who were, had viral suppression demonstrated zero linked transmissions to their HIV negative partner. Again, in this study, there were transmissions. People did get HIV, but the HIV they got was not from their partner. The number was zero. Now, in every study, there is a cloud of probability, and there is that, that, that numerical zero does not necessarily mean statistical zero, but from the perspective of the study and the tightness of the, of the confidence intervals, um, we can say pretty confidently that there have been zero transmissions. There is a partner study, too, coming out that will for, go deeper into this as well. But based on this data to this date, there have been zero transmissions if someone is virally suppressed, whether they're MSM or not. Next slide, please. This is another demonstration project that I think is really important to look at, Partners Prep Demonstration Project. The idea of this study is that zero different couples are recruited um, to go into a couple of different strategies for prevention. The partner living with HIV goes on antiretroviral therapy if they choose, and the HIV negative partner goes on PrEP. Uh, what happens is that they overlap for six months until the uh, HIV positive partner becomes virally suppressed. At the point of viral suppression for six months, the negative partner stops PrEP. Next slide, please. In this study, they had a lot of people who were recruited. Uh, a lot of folks went on PrEP, 97%. Most of them were adherent. 91% went on antiretroviral therapy, had high levels of viral suppression. And the study measured about 20% of time on PrEP alone, 30% of time on PrEP and antiretroviral therapy, and 40% of time on antiretrovirals alone, 7% on no intervention. Next slide, please. And what the study demonstrated was high levels of, of protection in men, in women, in those with high viral loads, et cetera. So they actually saw only four infections, significantly less than what's expected. But the stereo instructions of the study are really important. The bottom line is that, any indivi that the four individuals who seroconverted in this study, um, in, they were either in couples that were not using PrEP or antiretroviral therapy. So the high line statement is 
any antiretroviral therapy, PrEP, or treatment in this study resulted in zero transmissions of HIV. Next slide. So in conclusion, models, mathematical models and jurisdictional models demonstrate that, um, that viral suppression prevents HIV transmission. Clinical studies support that individuals who achieve and maintain viral suppression do not transmit HIV, and the combination of biomedical prevention, both for people living with and at risk for HIV, results in what could be the near elimination of HIV transmission. Next slide. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dimitri, and congratulations on the amazing work that you're doing in New York, it really gives the rest of us hope um, for 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 what we can do to end this epidemic. Uh, 